Uh, next up, we get uh, a promo from Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And uh, he is super over in Indianapolis, as you would expect. And he says, who's your daddy? Because they're in Hoosier country. And the fans chant MJF. And he said, that Mark Tony Khan tells me I got to wrestle on September 20th. And I uh, said, I was upset at first, but then I got happy because it's Grand Slam. And that's the Devil's Den. And starts singing New York, New York. And the fans kind of gave him a mixed reaction because they want to see him wrestle here in Indianapolis. And he says, whoever, whoever wins this tournament is going to find out that no one's on the level of the devil, but there's one person out there that needs to be taught a lesson. And fans start chanting, Joe. And he's interrupted by Joe's music. And Joe comes out and he says, what's your problem, kid? And MGF looks at him. He doesn't like that. Fans are chanting, Joe is going to kill you. And he says, you came out so fast because you confused the music with an ice cream truck. And Joe looks at him and laughs. He says, that's good. He said, last time I had anything to do with an ice cream truck, I was, on the, I was the biggest star on the other company's network. I didn't know what this was, but somebody clued me in that uh, that reality or that TV show that he was out filming for a while is actually on Peacock. So that I thought he was talking about NXT, but he said uh, he asks again, "What's your problem, kid?" And MJF is even more upset this time, and he says, "You know what's funny about me, Joseph? I'm a creative guy too. Who wants to hear MJF get creative?" And everyone cheers, calls him the Pillsbury Joe boy, and then he calls him Samoa Doe. And the fans didn't really like those because I don't think they really want to hear him call Joe fat. But then he says, Mecca like a high, your schmeckle's tiny. And all of a sudden, the fans love that, and they start chanting Tony. They dick. made fun or, of each other's dicks. Yeah. Joe says, your circumcision was postponed because the rabbi had nothing to work with. <laughs> it's like Ms. comedy now. And uh, he says, I think si hanging out in Indy made you stupid. And Joe calls him kid again. And now MGF's furious he gets in his face and he's threatens to knock his teeth down his throat if you call me kid again but then he says no no you want that and he says you can't skip the line joey and the fans start chanting joe again or fuck you joe and he says a lot of you are sounding like your mother right now joe says and mjf says i'd have bitten bitten at this when i was a kid but who's ready for story time with mjf baby and then he tells the whole story about uh you know what happened in nxt brooklyn long story short he got shoved by samoa joe when he was hiring his extra told the story of William Regal again, went through the whole thing again. I was like, it was, it was starting to get a little much at this point, but the, uh, the, the, the bad, the thing is he finally said, you know, I know why you did what you did. He said, you are despicable. And, and I know how despicable you black cause, cause I'm a scumbag too. And he says, you're the most diabolical, despicable, dangerous monster in wrestling history, the great Samoa Joe. And I said, you're worse but but you're good. And, but you decide to take a 19 year old kid and you shove me into a brick wall and laughed. And and I know why you did it. And I uh, said, because I'm a scumbag and I know how you think. And then the fans chanted, "He's our scumbag." And he says, "You did it because I was a kid and you can get away with it." He says, "But I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a full grown man. I'm a generational talent, AWA world champion, and the man who headlined the most historical pay per view of all time. I'm MJF." And Joe just kind of looks at him. Crowd's chanting MJF, and he says, so Joey, stay out of my way or I am going to kill you. And he smirks, and he says, you want to know why? Because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. And he holds out the mic, and the fans finish his catchphrase. And Joe's like, that was a point beautifully made, but you know what? I didn't think of you as a kid. You know what I thought about you? I thought you were a little bitch. And MJF is like pissed and he adjusts. He his says, ring. I thought you were a little bitch, and these fans are these same fans who were chanting Joe's yep. gonna kill you and this and that. Now fuck they're you, mad, Joe. they're chanting fuck you, Joe. Yeah. And then we got MJF the slaps big him. ass brawl. Yep, they got they get into a brawl and uh finally uh they uh MJF low blows him, gets him in the corner, stumps a mud hole in him, but his neck is bothering him, and Joe comes back with a urinagi, hits him with a mu muscle buster. Cole runs out to make the save. Joe bails, and he's taunting him all the way up the aisle. His kid, you don't look so good. And MJF is crying, and he's holding his left arm. I can't move my arm, and shit, shit, shit. And, and uh, Taz pointed out that he's been through this, and I kind of like that. And he kind of described, you know, when, when you lose feeling and how scary it is and everything. And Joe grabs a mic, and he says, try and keep your neck intact, you little bitch. And MJF is seething at the camera, and he falls to one knee while he's walking up the ramp. I, I the promo was kind of hit and miss for me, but I loved the they nailed the landing and and the brawl at the end was real good, and I thought for one split second when they were walking up the ramp, and the camera was shooting them from looking at MJF and you saw Adam Cole walking behind him, for one split second I thought Adam Cole was going to attack him. Well, and, that day's uh, you know going to come. That day's you know going to come. I thought this segment was great. 
I thought uh, the back and forth was was great. Uh, I mean, you can say whatever you want about you know the calling him fat and everything like that, but it's MJF's gimmick. He's a dick, and so he decided to be a dick to this guy. And uh, the guy was also a dick, so they uh, and actually they made fun of each other's dicks. So there was a lot of uh, dick related (laughs) stuff here in this promo. So uh, you know, then they got the big brawl and MJF selling the neck, everything like that. And you know, as I I talked about today. You know, this tournament of, of uh, I don't want to say geeks, because, like, Darby's in the tournament and Joe, and, you know, we all love Nick Wayne. But in general, it's like, this is a mid-card tournament. Roderick Strong hasn't even had a fucking match. I can't even remember the last time. He beat Jericho in his last match. And uh, the fact is, it's like, you didn't need a tournament to make me care about Samoa Joe and MJF. Yes. All yeah. you needed was his fucking segment. So, my presumption is... That said, that uh, the reason we have a tournament is because Joe is not winning. It's yeah. probably going to be Joe and MGF at the pay per view, and then maybe Roderick Strong is going to win. At, that's uh, what, yeah, that's what I think. Because happen. Roderick Strong should win and lose and be angry at Adam Cole, and that's got to play into the storyline somehow. But I thought this this was a great, great segment, and uh, and very much made me want to see uh, the MJF versus Samoa Joe match. And you're probably going to see it in your hometown. Yeah. And then uh, they're leaving, yeah. and out comes yeah. the kingdom, and and Roderick Strong's there with his fake bad neck, and uh, and he yells at Adam Cole, I can't believe you care more about his neck than mine. And, of course, MGF's fucking head's fallen off, and Roderick gets in the ring, and they just take off the neck brace. And so we got a guy with a fake bad neck versus a guy with a shoot bad neck because he had surgery on it. Doing a match where they work over each other's necks. Yeah. And it was great. I thought they had a very, very good match. Yep. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. I, uh, I love the, the touch of the kingdom wearing neck strong t-shirts. Um, yeah, they're just total geeks at ringside. But yeah, they had a really nice, nice little match. They're, you know, all kinds of uh, moves working over the head. Trent, Trent ended up hitting a pile driver and, uh, at one point. And I, th- I thought he was uh, going to get the pin there, but Roddy got his foot on the ropes. And then Roddy hit a jumping knee and the end of heartache, which is kind of flips him into the air and hits him with a backbreaker on the way down and got the win. Clean win, too. Uh, no interference at all from the kingdom, even though they were there. So, yeah, I think I think we're getting Roddy Strong winning this tournament, which uh, will, you know, nice little TV match for MJF and uh, more likely further the bromance storyline. And then, yeah, as soon as the match was over, the kingdom, uh, he's holding his neck and, and everything. And as soon as he puts the neck brace on, the, the, the uh, thing's fine. And they put up graphics for this tournament at this point. And uh, for those that don't know, so Roddy's going to face the winner of Nick Wayne and uh, Darby Allen, uh, Joe and Hardy on Rampage, and Penta and Lethal also on Rampage. And then all the winners are going to face each other on Rampage. And the finals of the tournament are next week. So got a one-week tournament here to crown a uh, challenger for the world title. But that's fine. I mean, it's just a TV match. So. Uh, and then we got... <laughs> maybe the best thing on the show uh not that mjf uh Samoa Joe thing probably was but uh renee paquette with tony and uh tony, renee asked her about the uh the miscommunication with the spray paint that cost uh cost the um cost Soraya the match or um ruby the match last week and she says i don't recall the spray paint i've done so many performances in the last week and uh, she says, i'm not looking backward i'm looking forward and Renee says, well, the next week, there's a four-way eliminator match for a world title at a match at Grand Slam. And uh, Tony says, next week, I'm going to give you a sneaky little peek into my life. And then she says, chit up, tits out, and watch out for the shoe. And then she storms off the camera, and Renee's watching, watching. And then the minute she takes her eye off it, the shoe comes flying. This is so great. I don't know how she keeps getting away with saying tits on TV every week, but it's wonderful. I don't think you're not allowed to say tits. I, it, it just I mean, clearly wrong, you can say it? it. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. Multiple you just times. don't hear it very often, do you? Well, you don't. <laughs> no, but uh, it's it's great. I, I can't wait for the T-shirt. Uh, and then we got actually was was a really good segment as well. Uh, Hangman Adam Page comes out, and and my first thought was, why isn't he in this tournament? And and we'll we'll hear more about that uh, over the course of the promo. But Tony Schiavone's in the ring with him. He put over that he won the over budget battle royal and. Uh, won this money for charity and hangman talks about how wonderful it is that he was able to give money for, uh, for the public school system. Cause he's a former teacher. So he thanks everyone. And he says, but I want to look forward now. And before he can say anything, out comes swerve. 
And uh, and then I'm wondering, why isn't he in the tournament? He beat Nick Wayne. And uh, Nana asked the fans to show him respect, and they boo. And uh, you hear you do hear some people chanting for Swerve. I think Swerve's- the highlight of this segment was actually when old Prince Nana decided that his new gimmick is he will dance to Swerve's music. He danced <laughs> to the ring. They do the promo, and then when it's over, they play the music again, and he dances all the way to the back. And you know what? If you're not going to have Prince Nana cutting promos, at least you could have him dance. And uh, he did a hell of a job dancing down to the ring. Well, Swerve did a hell of a job with his promo, too, I thought. Uh, Says he'd been in a coffin for two weeks. (laughs) That was funny. I find that hard to believe. Well, he'd be dead. He's a liar. Fucking things are airtight, dude. Well, he said he got he got perspective though, and he said the first person he thought about when he got out of the coffin was Hangman, and uh, he says yeah, he made fun of him for doing charity, and he says are you a mascot, and the fans start doing the LA Knight yeah treatment, and he said well, I don't know why you're trying to help these kids, they're just going to grow up to be juvenile delinquents, and uh, fans booed that, and he says you're doing charity on the pre-show instead of competing for titles on the main card, I'm ashamed for you. When this company started up, you were the cornerstone. You were handpicked to be the franchise player. Look what you've done, former tag champ, former world champ. They set an attendance record off your back, and now you're on the pre-show. I'm like, that was like 10 days ago. But he says, you lost your spot, or maybe you don't even want it. He's, you've got, you've got brand, you haven't had brand new wrestling gear in almost a year. you got no new merch. You signed a new contract extension, and it shows. And he points to his gut. He says, you got no singles matches on Dynamite, no promos, no title matches anywhere. You're taking a backseat to the elite because you got comfortable. And he says, opportunity after opportunity on a silver platter. If I got your opportunities, I'd be the first black AEW world champ. Fans pop for that. And he says, you got two options. Option A, right off in the sunset like in your cowboy movies. Let your contract fizzle out next to your career. Let me take that slot that you don't even want, and I'll turn this into whose house? Swerve's house. Option B, cowboy up and find that cowboy spirit. Show the people what cowboy shit is all about. And we can do this, and you can fight me for that spot. But I want to warn you, I got zero empathy for human life. Gets right in his face. He says, I got no regard for anyone. I'll walk you like a dog. Either way, I'm coming for that spot that you act like you don't even want. And uh, Hangman says, "Ah, if you want a match with me, go to the back and get it. But I'm done with this shit. And he walks out and Swerve says, there he goes. It's a shame your wife and kids got to watch their father walk away from moral responsibilities. And that's too much for old Hangman. And he runs back and he gets in Swerve's face, immediately gets attacked from behind by Brian Cage. And Taz brings up their history and uh, they lay out Hangman and uh, they leave. And I thought this was a great segment, sets up a feud that it's amazing. I've heard so many people want these two guys to feud. Uh, just in the last week, and and here it is. Well, you know, if you want to make a difference in AEW, the best thing you can do is tweet about it. So, uh, yep, they'll be facing off against each other, and I thought this segment was great. And, you know, people have been asking the question, like, what the fuck's up with the hangman? And they've asked essentially every question that Swerve asked in this this segment right here. And uh, now, you know, hangman's going to be doing something. And he has signed a new deal. He is there long-term. So they should uh, they should be doing something with Hangman. Make your money off this guy. You're paying him a shit ton. So uh, I don't know if Swerve will win the feud or not. My guess is not, but uh, should still you know elevate both of them. I, th- I think he advances just by being in the feud. So I mean, the, and, and chances are they'll have more than one match. The segment itself was great, but I mean, honestly, Hangman didn't really do anything in this promo. He just looked at the guy, and then he got mad at the end. So uh, there's obviously a lot more to come here, but I liked it. Like this yeah, segment. I did too. And obviously and I, it's going to be, uh, you know, Cage first. So I guess they could actually do Cage at uh, Grand Slam and then Swerve at I think, the I think the they're doing Cage on Dynamite next week. Already? Dynamite? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So probably, I, I would think at Grand Slam, maybe a tag match. Maybe you could do like Omega and Page against uh, Cage and Swerve or something. And then do the singles match in Seattle. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.